Hello everyone, I am Kai Wang. It's okay. Now I will share our research. It is a collaboration <coughs> between Delhi University of Technology and Macquarie University. The knowledge graph is proposed to describe entities and their relationships existing in the human knowledge. We know that Lyon is a city in France. In the knowledge graph, it can be recorded as a factor triple in forms of height entity, relation, and tail entity. Knowledge graph embeddings aim to represent entities and relations in the knowledge graph as continuous vectors in a low dimensional vector space. Compared with symbolic triples, these learned embedding vectors can be easily processed by machines and can be utilized to discover new factual knowledge or provide knowledge data to other AI tasks. This figure shows the link prediction process of a KJ model. Given a query including an entity and a relation of a triple, the KJ model predicts the missing entity from the candidate entity site. Because there are too many entities in the knowledge graph, KJ models are usually trained by the negative sampling loss. For each candidate triple, the model will output a triple score via a scoring function. We train the model to make the correct triple score higher than those simple negative ones. However, recent work has found that negative sampling loss is time consuming and suffers from unstable gradients. Therefore, in this paper, we focus on improving the training strategy of the KG model. The motivation of our paper is derived from the contrastive learning. Taking the image classification task as an example, in order to learn a representation vector for each image, contrastive learning first generates an augmented image as the positive sample of the original one. Then, in the vector space, contrastive learning loss trains the positive pair as close as possible and meanwhile forces the original image far away from the other images in the same batch of data. We found that training a KG model is similar to a self-supervised contrastive learning process. Training the ER query and the missing entity or triple as the positive pair the KG model has the same training target. Based on the commonality of the two problems, we pay attention to two insights in the recent contrast to learning papers, and they inspired us to rethink the previous work in the KGE field. First, in an ICML 2020 paper, scholars found that the contrastive learning loss is to achieve two properties, alignment and uniformity. This insight inspired us to propose a novel loss function based on query sampling to overcome the drawbacks of negative sampling loss. Secondly, in the CVPR 2021 paper, scholars found that the temperature trick can distinguish easy and difficult samples and speed up the training process. This insight leads us to discover similar tricks in recent low-dimensional KGE models and propose an hardness-aware activation function. The above two techniques jointly contrast our novel KGE training strategy called HAIL. Before describing our query sampling loss function, before introducing two previous non-sampling loss functions in the KGE domain. The first is the all-negative loss. It uses all entities as negative data in each training epoch without sampling operation. And the second is the non-negative loss. It only trains on positive triples and replaces negative training by a global regularization for entity embedding parameters. To replace negative simply, the bow two training strategies are moving to two extremes and have different drawbacks limiting their performance. Therefore, a straight idea is to put the two extreme strategies together. Given a batch of triples, 
we sample a part of triples to be trained with all negative loss, and the rest is trained with non-negative loss. Find the reorganization of the combined loss function. We find there are two items exactly satisfying the two properties of contrastive learning. The first item maximizes the scores of all positive triples, which achieves the alignment property. And the second uniformity property means that in order to learn a distinguishable vector representation for each sample, all vectors should tend to be uniformly distributed in the vector space. We find the second item in this loss function, which conducts all negative training to simple queries, is the more efficient way to achieve the uniformity. Furthermore, it can provide a common training target for all entity vectors to keep their guidance stable in the training process. Therefore, we propose a query sampling loss based on the bow loss function. Its computational costs can be significantly declined by reducing the sampling proportion of queries. The second part of this paper is the hardness aware activation for simple weight assignment. During the training process, many negative samples can already be easily distinguished, which cannot provide effective training gradients. Therefore, assigning different weights to samples will improve the training efficiency. In the contrast to learning loss, the temperature trick is utilized to address the weights on different negative samples, which is called the harness wearability in the CVPR 2021 paper. And we found that the nonlinear functions in the recent low dimensional KG models provide an easy way for weight assignment. The rotate model uses the arc edge function in its hyperbolic scoring function, and the root L model also uses a simplified nonlinear function. By analyzing the function curves, we found that compared with the simple temperature trick, these nonlinear functions can make the triple score of easy negative samples much smaller than difficult samples, such that more weights are assigned to difficult samples in the cross entropy loss so as to achieve the hardness aware ability. However, there is a problem that two existing functions are unbounded. The scores of distinguishable easy samples would be continuously declining and still take part in the gradient's calculation. To this end, we propose two upper bounded activation functions to achieve the weight assignment. They have similar values to the previous functions when x is less than 1.5, but have an upper bound controlled by its gamma. When we'll apply these activation functions to the triple scores, we also employ the relation-specific scaling trick to set different score ranges under different relationships. Finally, this paper combines the above two technicals into one training strategy called HILL. The query sampling loss function can provide a stable training target with less computational costs, and the harness aware activation function can focus on indistinguishable samples and ignore those easy samples, such that training efficiency can be improved and the model convergence is speeded up. Besides, in the paper, we select five typical KG models to test whether the HAIL framework can handle different types of KG models. To better compare the effect of different training strategies, we conduct link prediction experiments under a limited time and space condition. For the low dimensional condition, we set a 32 dimensional vector space and a 256 dimensions for the high dimensional space. Meanwhile, each design is assigned a fixed training time according to the knowledge graph scale in the data set and the metrics of the link prediction task includes the MRR and HSN. 
Higher MR and high tight N means a better model performance. In the experimental results, first in the liquidation impairments in low dimensional space and time limited condition, we trained five different KD models using native sampling loss and our hill loss respectively. For the FB15K237 site, the training time is 20 minutes, and for the WN18RR site, the training time is 10 minutes. From the experimental results, we can find that the KD model trained by Hale can achieve significantly higher prediction accuracy than those using negative sampling loss in the limited time. Compared with fully trained state-of-the-art low-dimensional KG models, the limited time performance of hell trained models is even competitive to them. We also conduct some experiments in the high-dimensional vector space on three different sizes of KG sites. The experimental results can also prove the advantages of the hell trained strategy compared to the negative sampling loss. Especially on the code XLD site, the hit size 10 matrix so hell trained models outperformed that of the fully trained KG models, and the training time is much less than the later. Then we compare the effects of different training strategies. These charts show the growing curves of HSS10 in the training period of the rot e model on the three data sites. It can be seen that the non-negative training loss, the purple curve, starts to decline after multiple training epochs. The green curve, which is the basic negative sampling, increases slowly at the first 100 seconds due to its unstable gradients. The all negative loss and the root ease weighted loss functions are better than the basic one. Then we can find that our method in the light blue curve increases quickly at the beginning and keeps the highest hit at 10 results in the whole period. We also compare different activation functions in the same way, and we can find that our functions in the light blue and purple Option an improvement compared with the previous functions, especially on code XM and WN18RR sites. Finally, we conduct a series of ablation experiments and verify the effectiveness of key parts of the hail training strategy. We also find that the hardness of wear activation function also works on the previous loss functions such as negative sampling loss and all negative loss. In summary, we propose a high-efficient training strategy for KG models to replace negative sampling. By combining the newest findings in contrast learning and recent KGE research, we design a query sampling loss and a hardness aware activation function. The experimental results on five different data sites prove the effectiveness of our training strategy. In future work, we will make more experiments on more larger scale knowledge graphs, and we will try to propose a simple and effective KG framework with more accurate theoretical analysis. Finally, we will apply these technicals to the other representation learning tasks. That's all. Thank you for your listening. the video presentation we have uh, Kai here the one of the authors of the paper are there any uh, of the audience have a question for the authors uh, yeah I have a small I have a small question uh, I didn't get this part uh, uh, how do you define the hardness of the queries or oh, sorry of the negative samples Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat, repeat your question? My question is how you how you can define where which which negative samples are uh, are hard ones. Uh, yes, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, about the hardness, uh, it means 
the difficult or the easy negative samples for the uh, KG model training. So actually, we um, just uh, justify the hardness uh, just through the triple score for the negative candidate triples. So if the um, triple score is higher, so that means this uh, negative um, instance is hard to distinguish between, uh, with uh, uh, re uh, the real target, real target entity. So yeah, that, that's it. Oh yeah, okay. Thank you. I think this is a uh, this is a nice idea because this way you challenge the model and that uh, yeah. really puts the the learning. I guess. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. I just have a quick question to you, Kai. Um, do you think um, moving uh, or you proved in your experiments that relying on a Euclidean in space would actually reduce the or eliminate the complexity of the hyperbolic um, hyperbolic geometry operations. Do you think of any use case that actually could be the other way around or you think that it would work more or less in in, in most of the cases that um, this elimination and relying on Euclidean space would actually benefit the model better? Uh, you mean compare the hyperbolic model with uh, my uh, yeah. strategy? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, actually, um, uh, if we just compare the KD performance in the link prediction task, I think uh, my, mo my method just in the Euclidean space can outperform the hyperbolic models. And also it can reduce the computational uh, costs because the option, the vector option in the Euclidean space is much faster than the hyperbolic operations. Yeah. But uh, do you think in other cases that the hyperbolic would actually benefit the model better or in mm, actually, other, in in my other another, tasks or? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, actually, in another my previous work, uh, work I have um, compared different relationships, uh, the performance of different relation types of the Euclidean-based models and the hyperbolic-based model. So they truly have the difference because the uh, um, heretical uh, property of the different relationship. 